Hello everyone, this maple fudge is a more of a traditional style fudge. It's a bit more difficult to make than the sweetened condensed milk and chocolate fudge that I've shown you before, but it certainly is well worth the effort. Starting off with a large saucepan over medium heat, place one half cup of pure maple syrup, one cup of heavy whipping cream, that's 35% milk fat, and then two cups of brown sugar as well as a pinch of baking soda. That's a teaspoon of baking soda in the green container, but start off with just a pinch. Now stir those ingredients together over medium heat and then stir constantly until it comes to a boil. Now when it starts to boil, it should foam up quite high up in the pan. If it doesn't foam up high when it starts to boil, you're gonna add some extra baking soda. I added almost the entire teaspoon of baking soda. I gave it a stir and immediately it started to foam up and it foamed up quite high up in the pan. And then I knew I had put enough. So once it starts to boil and it's foamed up, let it boil over medium heat until you reach the right temperature. This mixture needs to reach the temperature of 238 degrees Fahrenheit or 114 degrees Celsius, which is called the soft ball stage in candy making. Now to check the temperature, you can use an instant read digital thermometer like I'm using here, or you could use a candy thermometer. A candy thermometer has the advantage that you can stick it on the side of the pot and you can monitor the temperature as it's cooking. Uh, an instant read thermometer, you have to hold it in the mixture and wait until you get to the right. So as soon as your mixture gets to the right temperature, you are going to pour it into a greased bowl that's been put on a little rack. Pour it all in all at once. And the recipe instructions say not to scrape the bottom of the pot. I guess it's because there might be some darker bits or burnt bits in the bottom. You don't want those in your fudge. And then you're gonna let this mixture sit out at room temperature until it reaches 100 degrees Fahrenheit or 38 degrees Celsius. Once it's at the right temperature, add a teaspoon of vanilla and then comes the hardest part of this recipe. It's beating this with a wooden spoon until it gets to the right texture. You could use a heavy duty mixer with a paddle attachment if you have one for about eight minutes at medium low, but most mixers can't handle this because it's very thick. So beat it with a wooden spoon about seven minutes. Um, it's better if you do this with friends because you can take turns because it's quite difficult to stir it because it's so thick. And I'm telling you right now, you're gonna think that you failed and that your fudge is not working because you're gonna wonder how it's possible that this is gonna turn into fudge, but it does. You can see how the texture has changed as I've been mixing it. The color changes, the texture changes from something stringy and sticky to something that looks more like peanut butter and looks more like fudge. It'll also lose a lot of its gloss. When you get to that point, Remove it from the bowl and put it into a lined eight by eight inch baking dish. I lined mine with aluminum foil, but you can use parchment paper as well. And then just pat it down with a spatula to make it nice and smooth and then let it cool completely. I put mine in the fridge to make that go a little bit faster. Once it's set, you're going to cut it into individual servings. And what's great about the aluminum foil or the parchment or the parchment is that you can lift it right out of the pan and it makes it a very easy cleanup. Now, this is fudge. Fudge is basically sugar and cream that's cooked. For the most part, that's all it is. Sometimes there's chocolate added as well. It is very, very sweet, and like any candy, most of the time you're only gonna eat a very small piece of it because it is so sweet. The texture is fantastic. It's soft, um, but it is very fudge-like and it is absolutely delicious. The maple syrup flavor comes through quite nicely. I stored mine in a plastic container with a lid. You don't have to keep it in the refrigerator if you don't want to. And I brought this whole batch to work because that's too much fudge for my family. Now I was very happy with the way this fudge turned out. It was soft, but not too soft. It held its shape quite nicely, even at room temperature. And I found the amount of crystallized sugar in it was just perfect. It was sweet, but it had a nice hint of creaminess to it. And that maple syrup flavor shone through quite nicely. Fudge making is something you learn with experience. And if you've ever had super dry, crumbly fudge, it was probably overcooked or overbeat. And if you've had fudge that's really soft and it doesn't stay together well, 
that it probably wasn't beat quite enough or was undercooked. So sometimes it takes a little bit of experience before you get the exact texture that you need, but it's delicious. Give it a try. I also have a fudge playlist where I have several different kinds of fudge. Some of them are the old fashioned fudges and some of them are the fast fudge like this rainbow fudge. So click on your screen or look in the description box below for the link to this playlist. And if you subscribe, you'll be notified of new uploads. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.